the fit out so far. So what we've got now is we've got the dual battery set up in place. So we have the dual battery here, which is a Nomad V6, 100 amp, 105 amp hour, sorry. We do have a 40 amp Matson DC DC with solar input. So that's in place now, but it's only kept in place by cable ties because I haven't decided where I'm going to secure it yet. I'm going to make a base plate here, which will be a powder coated black, and then I'm going to tack it on the inside so you won't see that except from our brand name. You can see here we've got two fridges running, got two by 52 litre fridges. You can run them as a fridge, run them both as fridges or freezers, one, one fridge, one freezer, whatever you like. I've got the cable running through on both sides. I've got 50 amp running over there to an Anderson. I've also got 50 amp running through to another Anderson here. I've cut the plugs off the fridges, which we do make. These are Nomad Arctic fridges, N52s. We'll still cut the cigarette plugs off these and we'll put Andersons on there because the connection is much better and more secure. So when they're bouncing around, it's not going to disconnect. So that's the two fridges running at the moment off the, the, um, the battery and it's connected to the crank battery with a 40 amp fuse. I'm going to change that to a, a 40 amp, uh, either resettable or a 40 amp circuit breaker. Um, I just wanted to get it up and running and it's all connected now and working. So. This is now in a position where it can take one pallet in the front, one pallet in the back, and this is what they call a Deliver 9 LDV. It's a short wheel base, so it's one of the smaller ones of the vans. Uh, it can be fitted out as a camper. Um, if I was going to fit this out as a camper, which we will do eventually, <coughs> is we would put insulation up in the wall, and wall cavities in behind these here. There's quite a lot of space in behind there, and there's a lot more we can do with it. We're going to run the inverter up the top. Uh, we want to keep the inverter uh, with some air coming to it to keep it cool because it's obviously got moving parts and the other thing is that with the DC DC you always want to put the DC DC clicking uh, close to the auxiliary battery you can put these under the bonnet but like with any, any electrical equipment heat is not your friend if you can keep away from heat then do so so we put this at the back here so we've got access to air conditioning it's going to keep it cool and it's also close to the, uh, the secondary battery or the auxiliary battery in this case it's a V6 so that's where we are at the moment. This is a fully functioning courier van now. It can go back out to work tomorrow with it. Um, it even fits the trolley on top of the fridges here. You can stack stuff on top of the fridges. We may make a, a temporary um, a seating that goes over the top, covers them both with lids on them, and then you can still stack on top. But that's really a, a rushed fit out as to how they I can fit it out as it is and run two fridges and then have 50 amp cabling running through uh, to other points of the, the, uh, the van. We will run... A, uh, most likely a Nava power uh, station at the back which is pretty much just a, um, uh, a visual unit with switches and some cigar plugs at the back and we'll probably run 50 amp cabling out to the back there we might run a, uh, a 240 plug out there as well but that's going to run off probably 120 amp cabling it all comes down to what we've got cavity wise and space but in these here there's a lot of cavity space up top there, so I don't think we'll have a problem. But at least this can go out now it's ready to go and the dual battery system's in place. So it's 40 plus degrees now, as the app tells me on the uh, the smart app for the uh, the V6. Um, so we'll continue this. And we'll do a bit of a walk around now, so you can see the, uh, the Nomad Arctic fridge is in place and the other side of uh, the engine. So here we have the Delivered 9 with the pallets back in place. You've still got plenty of room there for the two fridges. I've just got a moggy strapped in at the moment and the trolley sitting on top. And then I've got the Anderson down the end there. There's one Anderson over here, you can see. Um, I could actually put it into the steel part, but I left it there because I'm not sure if that's where I'm going to end up having it. It is out the way. It's not going to get hit by anything. And then you've still got a pallet in the back and you've got plenty of room there. You can store on top of the fridges if you like. Over here, you've got the V6 behind here. And then you've got the DC-DC. And now that we're back inside, let's just talk about where we are at with the DC DC installed in that van and what we're going to be doing next. So at the moment, we've got the cabling running in through the cavities to be able to give us uh, some Anderson connections in the back of the vehicle to run the fridges. And then also we've got the charge to the DC DC 40 amp. We've got the uh, fuse between the crank battery and the DC DC uh, as specified by the Matson product, the 40 to 50 amps. So we're going to be putting the uh, 40 to 50 amp circuit uh, breaker uh, or resettable fuse. We currently just got a blade fuse in there for the moment until we fit it out completely. What I did want to mention is that if these are completely flat, the DC DC charger may not uh, see the battery. And that's the good thing about keeping the AC DC charger that comes with these units. 
just keeping it handy because it may need to put some charge into it. It's not like an AGM with an acid gel where you run it down to 50% and you're going to charge it. You can run these dead flat, it won't hurt them. However, the DC DCs sometimes do not, depending on the brand, don't pick up when there's very little or no current in the actual units or less than a half an amp for an example. Uh, some chargers will pick up, but it will detect no detection. So if it's got no detection, then that uh, DC DC charger in your vehicle won't work. So just remember that, don't run it completely in dead flat, or if you do, just make sure you still got the AC DC charger around, just put a bit of charge in it so that your DC DC can identify or be able to see the battery. So that's where we're at at the moment. So the DC DC is running, uh, we haven't got the solar input connected as yet, uh, and then we're going to see how it runs tomorrow, running in a full day with those two fridges running. I've got both of them set at minus two degrees and 105 lit 104 litres in total. I would typically run one as a fridge, one as a freezer, but it's got plenty of room in there. And that's a short wheelbase LDV. Uh, so if you've got an LDV van or anything on those lines, like a Sprinter, uh, which is longer wheelbase, then you've got plenty of room in there. So you've got two pallets and then you've got your fridges in place there. So again, we'll see how it goes tomorrow, but that's where we're at. And then uh, we'll put the inverter in, we'll put the oven, the, uh, the microwave blenders and all that sort of stuff over the coming weeks. Uh, again, we're just going to work out where we're going to put them because we want to have that van functional while we're doing that. So we're going to do it bit by bit and hopefully it's not going to be 45 plus degrees when we do it. So uh, again, we'll just keep it up to speed, but that's